Well, my son is getting sick. My wife is getting over being sick. So you might hear some coughing and then the kitties are in the background. <laughs> so this will be a chaotic additional thoughts for Sylvia Demo by Isaiah Rashad. I took a lot of notes this week. You know, I felt like there's been a couple recent additional thoughts videos where I'm like, it feels a little generic. I'm not really saying anything other than, oh yeah, it was good, I liked it, you know? So when it comes to Sylvia Demo, oh yeah, it was good, I liked it. <laughs> no, honestly, fantastic, fantastic album. Really, really enjoyed it. I can see why it, it's been, I mean, there, there are certain albums I haven't listened to yet that have been just consistently recommended since almost the duration of the channel's existence. I mean, I'm sure the, the Saba, Care For Me folks are just out there wringing their hands going, Bob, we keep telling you. And it is, I don't know, it's always fun for me to be surprised, even though I shouldn't be surprised anymore because these albums, <laughs> kitty crash in the background, these albums that are so persistently recommended, I think in the back of my mind, there's no way, right? I mean, I've heard a lot of amazing music. You guys point me in the direction of a lot of amazing music. There's no way it's going to be that good. Sylvia Demo really gets up there in terms of quality, where I would rank it, etc. Um, I think the biggest part, I, I, so one of those, no skips. Obviously, I think that's pretty straightforward, no skips. And something I dialed in on over the week, spending time with this album, in the reaction I was kind of talking about Isaiah Rashad and his style, and I really couldn't put a finger on it. You know, there's certain styles that people have I like Jid because he's so playful and varied and Biggie's just so smooth and comfortable and Pac's got that power and that sound. You know, there's just different rappers that have these different styles. You can really pick up on them. And with Isaiah, I was having a hard time locking in on his style. <laughs> I'm loving the cats being in the background. And it occurred to me after a couple listens, he's kind of like a, a really good card dealer. <clears throat> it's almost like his style is this sleight of hand where you don't really notice it unless you're really paying attention. It, well, it's not even that. It's more of like a thing of what he's doing is better than what you realize. Because of his style, it's like he just kind of pops things out there and you don't necessarily pick up on it right away. But he does have this cool use of like layer on the vocals and some power, especially with his writing too. I think his, really, his writing supplements this kind of sleight of hand vocal style that he has where <clears throat> I can't really like call out a specific thing about his vocal style, which is kind of odd, right? Because usually people have something that's somewhat distinct. But I think the way he spits these things out kind of tossing out these lines almost in a casual sense when really they mean a lot more than you realize. That combined with how he does it is, is what brings in this whole package of his vocal style for me. Uh, the opening track, Hereditary, I think is absolutely fundamental to the album. If you don't have this track, this, this, this opener with, I wrote, you know, Daddy taught me how to drink my pain away, how to leave somebody, how to smoke my loaves, how to not need anybody. If you don't have that opener, 90 seconds, the rest of the album does not have this sub layer of emotion that exists within each track. Because what's so cool about this album is you could pull pretty much any track from this album and throw it into a playlist or put it on by itself. And it's got a good energy. You can listen to the song solo. They don't need to exist within the album. You know, some albums, even though I love a good theme, a good story, some albums, they do that so well that if you lift a song from that setting, the song itself doesn't work as well anymore. Like I think the biggest, for me, the biggest one that suffers from that would be Pink Floyd, The Wall. Not related to hip hop, obviously, but there's so many songs on the wall that you don't really listen to by themselves because they're just a bit of this whole story that's going on. So it's, to me, it's a very clever mechanic to open with a song like Hereditary, which on the surface seems like a strange way to open maybe because especially with this album, the energy that it has, <clears throat> you, could almost, you could almost skip over it 
It, well, not that you should, but I, I could see some people maybe, although really, if based on the listens, everyone's kind of listening to the whole album top to bottom. But it, it does almost seem like this little thing. And you're like, what was that about? He's talking about his dad, and then it drops into the album. But really, it's creating this huge sub context for everything else that he's saying. And I love that. Uh, what else we got? Oh, yeah. I put a note about how I listened to a little bit of Earl Sweatshirt this week, too. And I think something else I enjoy about Sylvia Demo is there's some parallel in the style, in the emotion, in the energy between this and some of the stuff I've heard by Earl Sweatshirt. But I can get into Sylvia Demo more because while I like Earl, he's a good artist. He's made some great stuff. He gets really deep in the dark really really deep into that depression and so sometimes i'm like i'm just i'm not i'm not there <laughs> you know, like i'm not way down in those feelings right now so i feel like sylvia demo is more of a um it's it's there but it's just not so far gone into the darkness which is which is great i like the so the 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 title track sylvia demo i love that that the chorus you know getting higher and higher now what up what up and that, of course, feeds into that subtext of smoking the pain away. And there's all these little breadcrumbs every now and then about, you know, the effect that he's that his father leaving has had on him. And uh, I watched the 10 year anniversary video, uh, the spot, I think it was a Spotify special for the album. And then there, that's where he was talking about, you know, when I made this, I was 22 as fuck. He's almost like apologizing for some of the energy. I don't think that he needs to. Honestly, I mean, I, I can imagine for him looking back on it now and maybe some of the things that he says in the album, like, oh, I wouldn't have done it like that or a little too young in the mind or whatever. Right. Whatever. But at the same time, it's expressed so well in Sylvia demo that you, know, you don't really have to explain it. You know, it's just it is what it is. And it's really good for what it is. Uh, and I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then in that same video, he's talking about. Uh, lyrics and how he doesn't swear as much and if he does you know it's got to really mean something because he has his kids now and he's trying to consider his kids he wants his family to be involved he wants his kids to be able to listen to his music and go to his shows and when he started talking about that I got the biggest smile on my face because here's a guy in his album expressing basically this kind of black small small black hole in the middle of all this crap that's swirling around him and it basically being his father's absence so to be that age and to express those things in an album so well but then also to come out of it and have his own family have his own kids and see that and essentially break the cycle is just fucking fantastic to me i'm so i was so happy to hear him talk about that and had some people send me some messages you know People told me about his sex tape that got leaked, that outed him as bisexual. When he, so that was like this huge thing, which sounds awful. And But all in all, it sounds like now he's in a much better place in his life, which is great. That's all, that's all I want from any of these artists is to be happier. <clears throat> what else do I got for notes? Somebody sent me a message, the, the Conan, the art of... Barbarian. I got so hung up on the Conan the Barbarian reference, they pointed out, you missed the bar. Conan and the art of bar burying. Oh, fucking brilliant. <laughs> and it was so slick and so smooth. It just bounced right off my bald little head, you know? And that, to me, that's one of those examples I was talking about, like where there's this really quick, fast, skilled card dealer where they can just like fling these things at you and you don't even know. Oh, shit, I've got my cards. Here they are. He's kind of like that with his lines. Just spits out these little cool things. Uh, what else do I have? What else? Ain't no money. Ain't getting no money on that conscious shit. That's Ronnie Drake. That's a fantastic track. The piano production and Rip Kevin Miller is really cool. I, uh, you know, Heavenly Father is an amazing song. Steel drums, stripped down production. I'm basically just reading my notes here, right? I like how the production strips way back when he goes into essentially his confession. But I think Shot You Down is my favorite track. I, lo I love solilo soliloquy too. I looked up the definition and it's a dramatic 
speaking thing to oneself, essentially, which is exactly what that is. It's tough. Heavenly Father is amazing. <laughs> it's a really good song. But I love Shot You Down. I love this, like, ride out of the album. After you kind of go through this pent-up emotional state where it's the pressure is building and the strain is getting stronger and then he kind of finally boils over and pops on Heavenly Father and just admits to himself all the shit that he's doing wrong and all the ways he's trying to cope and cover up these feelings. And then you kind of come down a little bit. I mean, you know, Banana and Brad Jordan, what is it, Brad? Two dope boys and a busted ass mental. <laughs> Every time that comes on, man, I just start laughing so hard. But Shot You Down, it's it's the longest track off the album. It's got that high pitched kind of note hanging in the hanging in the sky. This real clean, simple drum beat. Great verses. J Rock crushes his verse on that one. I do think that's my favorite one. It's just a fantastic track, and it's a great way to just wrap up the album. <clears throat> I think that's it. That's pretty good. That's already eleven minutes. I didn't realize it'd been going that long. Good for me. All right. Yeah, Sylvia demo. Excellent recommendation. Excellent album. No skips for sure. Fantastic album. Uh, Sun's Tirade is on the list now. A lot of people are talking about that one. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing more from Isaiah Rashad for sure. Friday, let's see. So Friday tomorrow, Lil Sims is dropping a new EP. Lil Sims is top five for me. So I'm very excited to check out her EP. It's called Drop 7. It's pretty short. So in the spirit of doing albums that people have been rec recommending to me forever. I'm also going to do Dave by or Psychodrama by Dave. So Friday is going to be a bit of like a UK <laughs> reaction day this coming Friday. And then Schoolboy Q's got an album coming. I haven't listened to any of his stuff yet, if you can believe that. So I've got some time off coming up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record a reaction to Blank Face. That, I'm going to record that on Monday, post it to Patreon on Tuesday, and then the YouTube version will go up Friday. So this Friday is kind of a double reaction. Next Friday is a double reaction, essentially. I don't know what the other album will be. But I'm going to work in some Schoolboy Q in preparation for his new album that's coming out. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm not planning on doing Oxymoron before the new album. Because I don't want to do three weeks of the same artist. I like to mix it up. So we'll see. I mean, I was thinking, what if I did it? <laughs> what if I did it the next Friday? It's just a lot of the same artist. I like variety. I like bouncing around and moving around. That's, that's very helpful for me because I don't want to get burnt out, basically. It's happened before with, some certain, with certain genres. And so I'm just trying to keep things fresh. So that's the plan going forward. Uh, if you're wondering where the Kanye reaction is going to be, I made a video talking about that. You can check it out. My explanation's in there. And uh, yeah, take care, everyone. We'll see you soon.